What's up guys and welcome back to WBC Builds and welcome to this interesting little video I have for you today all about building railways in Minecraft. So I'm going to show you guys how I like to build railways and also give you a few little tips and tricks and how you guys can build some railways in your own world. So without further ado, let's jump on into the video. Okay, so you can see here I have three different examples of how you can build rails in the game. This is obviously the first most important part of actually building a railway. Now you also may notice I'm not using minecart tracks at all because I feel their scale, while realistic-ish at one meter wide, they really just don't have the same gravitas as actually building proper railways like this. So each one of these is about five blocks wide and you can see here starting on the left I've gone for the use of dark oak slabs as my sort of sleepers and on top of those I have placed stone stairs. Now the reason I've gone for stone stairs is the original railways when built were made out of plates. Uh, they were shaped like this and they allowed the wheel to run along the inside plate. Now that's knowledge that none of you guys needed but that's my thinking as to why I chose stairs. You can see the ground here as well of the actual track bed has gone for a nice bit of texturing. I'll show you guys later on how to do that. So this is a polished and designed version of the same sort of stair railway but again it doesn't look that amazing. I don't like it too much but I have used it in the past and then this is what I used to build railways like and that is using anvils. Now my only real concern with anvils is if you stack them while using world edit and they fall off a cliff you're then left clearing up the mess. I know what a pain but my other concern is that I don't I don't like the way they sit so far above the ground Again, they are pretty good. I see a lot of people using them, but I like to use the stairs a bit more just because the colouring and the shape works a little bit better, especially when we come on to doing things like this. Now, this is a junction. Uh, it's a very basic junction, and it just sort of shows you guys how much space you may require for doing any sort of junction work when it comes to railways. Now, anvils, again, can work quite nicely for this, but I find stairs give you a better impression about what's going on. So what you can see I've done here is every time the stair moves over, it carries on using the sleeper here, but doesn't obviously interfere with the rails. As we move on up uh, every so often, you can see with the stair, you don't change round to actually having a different direction. But if you were using an anvil, you wouldn't need that anyway. It would just look the same. These are you know pros and cons of using both different methods, but I still, again, prefer the stairs. And then looking up as you go up, you can see the tracks start to split out and the sleepers no longer attach while they get to the top and these two tracks are now no longer attached. So this is like I said a very very basic overview of how to build junctions. Now for me they're very bespoke you kind of have to do them per what you're trying to do. Uh, there's no real way to explain how to do them apart from as you move up in different gradient between the two tracks you don't want to change it too sharply or too much of a shallow sort of curve on there. You want one about just right and again it's just sort of trial and error of that. So I'm going to show you guys quickly a few little ways of using just normal tracks like this and then we can get on to building some curved tracks. So over here my first way of using tracks is obviously on top of an embankment. Now embankments are fun to build because obviously it elevates the tracks above the ground. You can see here I have like a little canal running along this side so it needs a fairly steep uh, gradient on this embankment so it sits away from the canal. But on this side we've got a bit more of a shallow gradient and you've got yourself some nice flowers on there. Now what makes this look good is when you're doing it across a landscape you can obviously add bridges and all sorts of other little viaducts and structures to help the railway travel across the land. Now if we go to our next one you'll see a different way of using railways. And so we have this one here which is known as a cutting. So obviously the track is sitting in the v-shape of this man-made hill. So you've got two embankments on either side to keep the dirt where it needs to be. And then we've got this little road bridge across the top here which I think looks like a nice little addition to the place. But yeah, so these are the reasons why I like to build tracks rather than just using minecart tracks. And that's because you get such a nice little depth, great views, and it just feels so much better. Also, you get to build some trains as well, which is pretty cool. I don't build trains myself too much, but I know some people who do. So anyway, let's jump on now to the bit where I show you some world edit commands to help you design some curvy tracks and give you a little showcase of what I've done before. Okay, so since I'm here at the cutting, I thought I might as well carry on this track further on into the distance using a bit of a curve. Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit complicated. I'm still fairly new to word edit in the grand scheme of things, but I thought this is a quite a nice easy command to show you guys just to get some curves into the world. So what you want to do is type in this command here. So slash slash cell space and then convex. What this does is it now allows you to pick more than two points. So it's no longer a cuboid, it's now actually a spline. And if we do this, you can see what I'm talking about. So first of all, you pick your first point. Now I like to actually start a little bit further back 
just so you can get a bit more of a run up if you need to change these tracks here. So that is left click to place our first point. Now we're going to fly out here a little bit and maybe off to the right slightly like here. And then we right click to place our second point. And to make a curve, we need three points. So let's carry on in this sort of general direction like this. And then you can right click again and you get your third point and then maybe fourth point up in this direction over here straighten it back out again so four points there you can see we've come quite a distance away and obviously railways require quite a large distance to get radius in there uh, especially if you aren't just you know operating in a yard so the next command you need is the slash slash curve now curve works in the same way as a sphere or a cylinder where you can type the actual block you want to use so i'm going to use black wall for this uh, just space after black and then what I want to do is not actually have the wall take up really any space I just want it as a marking on the ground so I type the number zero which gives it no radius and as you can see we now have a curve drawn out on the ground like so it's quite a curvy one quite you know a little bit more exaggerated than I was going for but you can see the world edit has calculated that us for us so, oh uh, yeah, that may be an issue. But anyway, so let's get on down here and I'll show you guys what sort of I do next in order to get the railway tracks through here. So this is what I was talking about earlier on when I said you may need to just maneuver yourselves a little bit. So what we can do here first is send our wand back into cuboid mode. So you type in cell again and then just cuboid and that puts it back in to the left and right clicking. So we can move this over slightly and that starts us off on our track now this way. So what you want to do is go along and designate where your centerpiece is going to be. So for us, luckily we're using this black wall as our center line. So what you want to do is carry on placing all of your track down. Now, if you're doing this elevated, what you tend to do is place some more wool or something either side. So I tend to just use brown wool for this and then you count out how many blocks you want. So for me, railways are tend to be five blocks wide. So we've got that, that and that. Then you tend to leave another block next to it as well. So we want it about there. And what this is telling me is that if we then do it this side as well, you can now carry that on all the way up so you get a nice picture of where the corridor is going to go. And with that corridor, later on, you can paint it using World Edit. If you haven't seen that video I've done on how to paint roads and paths in Minecraft using World Edit, go check that one out now. That's quite a handy little video, especially goes along with this. So what I'm going to do here is just carry this on a little bit until we get up to there. And I'm going to show you guys how to do some sort of rails like this on a curve. Okay, so what I'm doing here is just selecting the area I want to turn into brown wall. Like I said, we can paint the brown wall later on. For these sections here where you've got these overlapping bits, what I like to do is just select the one back down one uh, because previously there was a black point in here as well. So if we do that and that, it gives you a bit more of a depth on this diagonal because obviously this is it's going around a curve now. So if you just follow the blocks as it is, it gets a little bit, um, a little bit narrow as opposed to keeping it a sort of distance. So you go out one like that and just in like so. And it's, it's just a way of keeping a little bit of width on here so you aren't losing all of that to the diagonal bit. Now, what you wanna do next is you can either stack these or just count up either side, but you wanna go up and place in all of your rails. Okay, so we've reached the end here and you can see I've put one back on itself and that just helps again add a little bit more of an angle to it. Once you go around the corners, it can look a bit, you know, a bit funny so again we'll just put one in like that and it just helps bring a bit more depth to it it doesn't always look great and the thing with stairs is you obviously have one face to them so you know exactly what that one face should look like so when you see it backwards around the wrong way especially in a sort of a line like this you get an idea of oh that's that's not right um anvils may take away that little issue again i, I recommend using stairs okay so that's the tracks in up to that bit and already you can see how good this looks around a curve. Uh, it doesn't look anything like this anymore, but it really does take from the straight sections into the bends really nicely. And I love doing this. In my town of Wolhampton and in that world, we've got a lot of railways on the go and it's always great fun to add railways. So all that's left to do is go through and add the sleepers. So obviously you've got to count through every other block for this. Uh, having it at every block just doesn't work very well. And there are gonna be times where you go, oh no, place the wrong one in the wrong place and yes unfortunately you have to go back and re recount every single one and place down every single one again uh, it just happens and as i said this is a labor of love as long as you put the time and effort into making these railways look good they will pay back in kind and then on the other side you obviously can do the middle ones at the same time but it always helps to get 
the running edge one down first as it gives you something to go on when you're walking back down the line to put them in and I can tell you the amount of times I've gone through and messed up had to reorder it all or, or just you know accept it and, and go well that's going to be like that forever now but still this looks so good when it's done and it's really really worth it you can obviously put some trains on here hand build those trains and then once you get some trees around the, the actual network and having having more and more routes connect in and out it really really does look great okay so that is all the sleepers in place up to that point there and again it's looking good it does narrow a little bit around here but it doesn't look too bad at all so obviously all it's left to do now is to paint so we're going to do that quickly what you can do is type out the command br sphere and we're going to be using a selection of blocks i'm going to go for coarse dirt along with some granite uh, add in there a little bit of brown concrete powder and then also a bit of brown mushroom stem and we're going to want to set that to a size of six or five i think six is the largest here and then we're going to mask that to brown and also to black because we've got black down the center and what we can do with this now is just right click and go along and paint the town a lovely color now what's going to happen as well is if you have holes underneath uh, and if you didn't watch my previous video you can see that without actually covering the base you're going to end up with holes under here where all the concrete powder falls through and that's never fun so going on now i'm just going to add this in and these little details really do help bring a world together so railways in conjunction with signal boxes and signals and all other little bits of rail paraphernalia really, really do help bring your world to life. So let's take a little stand over here and have a look at this railway. I mean, it works. It looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm happy that I've finally shown off how I do my rails. So if you guys have any comments on how I've done this, whether I've done something wrong, whether you think I should have done something a little bit differently, then please leave me a comment below. Also, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. But anyway, guys, thank you all for watching. It's been another one of these tips and tricks videos, this time all about railways. So I will see you next time with another one of these videos.